Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Creamer Media's Keith Campbell joins me in studio to discuss his recent trip to Toulouse, France, where European airliner manufacturer Airbus informed journalists of its latest developments at its Innovation Day 2015, where Campbell was a guest. Hi, Keith. So, in your words, Airbus is looking to become a leaner, not a meaner manufacturer. What does the company mean by this? Well, basically, they're trying to prove the efficiency of the manufacturing processes without uh, reducing the workforce, to increase automation but not reduce the human component to the company, to make things smoother and more efficient. Uh, Airbus has had a very long policy uh, of trying to maintain a smooth production flow and maintaining uh, a stable and steady workforce. In, in part, this is rooted in the uh, realities of employment law in Europe. Uh, in the United States, for example, uh, Airbus's great rival Boeing, uh, when there's an upturn in demand, recruits more workers. When there's a downturn in demand, just fires them. And then when there's an upturn again, it calls people back. Uh, that kind of approach is, wasn't really and isn't really possible in countries like France and Germany. Um, but Airbus has made a virtue of this situation by creating a stable workforce lo with long-term commitment, uh, maintenance of long-term skills. But the production rate has gone up staggeringly. Once upon a time, and not too long ago, we're talking only 30, 40 years ago, uh, many aircraft were still manufactured basically by hand. The aircraft manufacturing industry was in many ways a high-skilled but uh, artisanal industry. It was nothing like the automotive industry. Now, the growth in civil uh, aviation has been so staggering that demand production has reached levels that were once unthinkable. Airbus is completing a narrow body, a single aisle airliner, the A320 family. One of those is rolling off the production line every six and a half hours. An airliner every six and a half hours. Uh, they currently have three production lines, one in France, one in Germany, one in China for the A320 family and they're just starting with production of the fourth one in the United States. But that's pretty staggering. So they have to improve the efficiency of their manufacturing processes. They're bringing in automation to complement the human workforce and to make things easier for the human workforce. They're looking at um, concepts what they, uh, like they call cobot for cooperative robot where the Robot access is difficult to get places during the assembly, but is operated by a human operator standing only a few meters away. And also to try and improve just-in-time parts delivery. Uh, they have already introduced crawler robots to help uh, join sections of the fuselage on the A380 uh, Super Jumbo airliner, for example. So it, it, it's, to, it's to make a 21st century production system for the aircraft while retaining the, the, the workers. And th this is, 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 of course, affecting uh, the suppliers because the suppliers also will have to be able to meet Urban, Airbus's demands, not only in terms of quality, but in terms of uh, promptness of delivery uh, with the scales, if you want, increased. So, uh, they always have had to be prompt in delivering the uh, components, but they're going to have to be faster at doing it. So this is what they're trying to do to improve their own production efficiencies and to encourage their suppliers to do the same. And in terms of customers, how are the commercial sales faring? They're doing pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, Airbus's backlog is... 6,399 aircraft, 6,399 airliners ranging from the smallest, the A318, to the biggest, the A380, are currently on order. Uh, they have won up to the um, 
beginning of May, Airbus had won 205 orders uh, for this year, the first five months of this year. Uh, no, but, uh, the first four and a half months of this year, roughly 205 orders, which was 62% of all airliners ordered uh, in the world above the size of regional airliners. There are different categories of airliners. Uh, but uh, in terms of single aisle and what are called wide body airliners, uh, Airbus got 62% of the orders so far this year. So uh, they're looking very good. And in terms of the A380, is the company still confident in this aircraft? Well, the, the head of Airbus Commercial Aircraft, uh, and, and perhaps to digress a minute, uh, we have the Airbus Group, which used to be called EADS. And under that, we've got different companies. Uh, Airbus Commercial Aircraft is the original Airbus. They manufacture the airlines. Then you've got Airbus Helicopters, who used to be Eurocopter. And you have Airbus Defence and Space, who, by the way, are responsible for the A400M, which had a tragic uh, crash uh, some weeks back. Airbus Commercial Aircraft have nothing to do with the A400M program. So the head of Airbus uh, Commercial Aircraft, that's Fabrice Brezier, uh, admitted that they had perhaps overestimated the market for the A380. But they are still uh, vigorously marking, uh, marketing the aircraft. And their chief operating officer customers, an American called John Lee, is confident they will win more orders this year and they will win enough orders to bring the program to break even point. Now, Lee has got a great record in selling aircraft. So his confidence is taken very seriously, I think, by everybody. The, the other factor concerning the 380 is that the, I mean, the biggest customer is Emirates. And Emirates has a policy of never keeping aircraft longer than midway through their lives. So uh, a modern wide body aircraft has an official life of 25 years. Emirates sells at 12 at the latest. Uh, that's not far away now because the first A380 flew 10 years ago. Uh, so there's going to be, uh, over the next few years, we're going to see A380s released onto the second hand market. Airbus is confident that this will be a benefit. Because the indications are that the way the financing will work for a second-hand A380 will make it affordable for many airlines that could, uh, affordable to lease uh, uh, for many airlines that could not afford a new A380. So they're expecting, they're confident the market will expand as a result of these aircraft coming to the second-hand market. So yes, they're, they're, they're pretty upbeat about the future of the plane. And Airbus's latest program, the A350, how is that progressing? They are uh, reporting uh, that it's going better than expected. Uh, I, I should point out that three A350s are in operational service with Qatar Airways. And Qatar is apparently very happy with the aircraft very happy with very high levels of availability. Um, they are very happy with the way everything is going. And as I say, they have re apparently reported to Airbus that it exceeds the expectations. Now, production is ramping up. Uh, currently, they are what they call rate three. Uh, that's three aircraft completed every month. They want to uh, ramp up to rate 10. That'll be 10 aircraft completed uh, every month. By the way, to digress, I mentioned earlier the A320 family. That has now been approved for rate 50. They will be, from next year, producing those single aisle planes at a rate of 50 a month. But anyway, to get back to the A350, uh, so they're ramping up to te 10 a month. Uh, the, in the near future, Vietnam Airlines will become the second operator. After the northern summer, Fin Air of Finland will become the third operator. And by the end of the year, uh, the Latin American group 
uh, will become the fourth operator with a plane going to the Brazilian operation TAM or TAM. So they're very happy with the way things are going in the, on the A350. Uh, this year they have started the production of the first major components of the next version of the A350. The current production version is the A350-900. The next production version will be the A350-1000, which is longer, carries more passengers. So they started in April with the assembly of the first major components for the first A350-1000. Now this uh, includes some improvements over the Dash 900, uh, which is the current production version. Uh, as I said, it's longer. It makes greater use of carbon fiber reinforced plastic than the Dash 900 does. And the Dash 900, over 50% of it is, is composites. Uh, it has uh, introduced uh, a six-wheel main undercarriage bogies, for example, with necessarily bigger undercarriage bays. Uh, improvements in, in uh, various electronic systems, uh, aerodynamic refinements, and of course, it's going to have uh, a more powerful engine than the Dash 900. So there's a number of, uh, of improvements over over the uh, Dash 900 version, but it still retains a high degree of commonality. They're, they're very optimistic about this program. Thanks, Keith. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.